So today I want to show you how to control a WS2812 or WS2813 strand of LEDs from your uh, ESP32 device using the Chili Pepper workspace. Okay, so here we are fresh and new in the ESP32 workspace. So the first thing I'm gonna do is connect to my ESP32 device and we should see some data coming over here in the port. If not, hit reset, that resyncs things, and then I usually like to hit heap just to make sure it's accepting my commands. And so what you can do is come to the uh, sample code, and there's a WS281XX LEDs sample code, and I created this uh, little four strand. You can see you gotta solder it, but you can order this thing on, um, AliExpress or eBay and I'm gonna go ahead and upload and run this code while it's uploading you can see that the pin uh, it's connected to is pin 4 and the strand length is 4 LEDs long and the rest of the code is pretty much ready to go for you so once that code is uploaded we should start to um, well, we'll get our library instantiated and then I'm gonna um, oh, there we go we're running already the uh, the code that runs here is the zled.chase command. What you can do though is you can type um, zled.stop to stop it from running and then to fill it with a color like black you do that. You can see that those lights went off and then you could do other fills like if I'm going to just fill it with green uh, that's the full brightness of green uh, so you say stop and then you can do things like zled.pulse and we'll pulse it with uh, blue and you kind of see it goes in and out so there's just a few examples uh, of that working um, and so that's pretty much all it takes to get going with your WS2813 with this sample code but let me walk you through the code a little bit. Um, we're using this WS2812 um, library that is built into the uh, firmware that I've got you uh, here uh, in this uh, GitHub releases page. That firmware pretty much has the kitchen sink in it. And then a couple methods for Chase. It does use the timer. And so one of the things you can do is you can increase this timer on, let's say, the Chase to make it go even faster. So instead of 100 milliseconds, let's go 20 milliseconds. And then we'll go ahead and let's make sure that the chase is what I have down here. Yeah. And so now we'll go ahead and upload and run that. And you'll see that the chase will run a lot faster. Uh, while that's uploading, though, there's also this pulse. And this essentially, um, when it gets to the value of 100, it reverses and go back, goes back down to a value of 3. You could play with those values if you want it to, for instance, go all the way to 255 for full brightness. Uh, I find, though, that the, once you're past 100, it, uh, it's harder to visually tell. So you can see that 20 milliseconds, that chase is almost so fast, it's pointless. So feel free to play with those different settings. Okay, so that was pretty fun getting these four LEDs to light up, but why don't we go a little bit bigger and actually get a strand of 144 times three WS2813 LEDs. The difference between the 2812s and 2813s is that the 2813s have some redundancy built in. So to do this one, I'm going to introduce a new item, which is an optocoupler. And this will not only do level shifting for us between the 3.3 volts and the 5 volts, but it will also isolate us from the massive amount of power that is running inside these. Um, I've got two power supplies over there, and they're actually running at about 18 amps. I'm sorry, 16 amps of power. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. So the, what we want to do is uh, pop this off, and then we want to connect uh, this white to 3.3 volts, which is right here, and then we want to connect the black to ground, and we want to connect the gray to signal 4. 
uh, and then make sure that the capacitors are in nice and all the wires are seated nicely. And then let's go ahead and um, rerun some code. So I'm going to reset the device. Well, I got to reconnect to it because fiddling it around made the USB disconnect. I'll reset from here, make sure we're in sync. And then let's change this code to be 144 times 3. That should do it. And then we'll call the, um, the pulse method. So down at the bottom, I'll just uncomment that, comment out the chase. And on the pulse, let's see what it's going to do. Um, I'm going to be sending a blue pulse to it. And it will be, where's the pulse? Here's the pulse method. It goes up to max 100 value and down to 3, and it kind of reverses, and it runs at 10 milliseconds. Let's change that to 20. I'm finding that at 10, it can kind of tax the system. So we will save that, and then we'll upload and run it. And so while that is uploading, there's a couple other methods in here, like pause and resume. There's that fill method, the stop method. And so I'll get ready to um, do a stop. But let's see what happens here. And presto, we are pulsing. Now the reason I've got a little red there is I think that that LED is bad. That does sometimes happen. So I have a nicely pulsating set of WS2813s and that optocoupler is pretty nice uh, to be using. All right, so thanks for watching and have fun playing with your WS2812 or 3 LEDs uh, inside the Chili Pepper workspace for ESP32 for Lua. Super easy to do any of this stuff.